So. We're looking for Bram Stoker, and we find who is Bram Stoker and the wager. Hello, 17,973, 41,413, and a two-day total of 77,147. Some of you may know this, some of you may not know about playing Jeopardy. It's a quiz show in the United States, and this was part of an IBM Research Grand Challenge. It was mentioned just before the chess, Deep, Deep Blue, that played chess and won against the world champion. Well, this was another big part of, of a Grand Challenge, which became Watson. And we introduced the world to cognitive computing on that day in 2011. Now, we didn't do Watson just to play video quiz games, as you can appreciate. Wanted to address much more serious topics. And if you think about Watson, which is based on understanding natural language, a deep Q&A architecture, building hypotheses on evidence, evidence-based, and machine learning capabilities. This is what makes a cognitive system. And when we built the system, we actually had some physicians and clinicians who came to us and said, great, but what interests me is I'd like to understand how did you come up with the answers? And more importantly, it's not just the answers themselves, but how did you come up with the hypothesis? And this is how we started to work in healthcare and work with institutions, clinics, and hospitals in the areas of oncology. So I'm going to use a few examples. And, but before I do that, we need to understand where do we come from? You know, if we think back, back in the last century, beginning of the century, we had tabulating systems, tabulating machines. That was the, that was the era of, of tabulating systems. And some of you may not know, but given the average age here, you probably have never seen a punch card in your life. But that was based on very structured data. Then we moved in what we call the programmable systems era. And the programmable systems era is what you know today. It's what you use every day. Your laptops, your computers, your tablets, your smartphones. This is zeros and ones, very good at calculation. But there's one thing that you could not do until we introduced cognitive systems. And that was to speak to your computer. Now, I'm sure that you're all nodding your head. I'm pretty sure that you've all spoken to your computer at least once in your life. And what you said was probably not very nice. Okay? But that is then when we introduced what we call the era of cognitive systems. And the era of cognitive systems allows us to actually use these technologies to assist when we talk about you know, research or if we talk about oncology. What you're seeing here is an example of a project we're doing with the New York Genome Center. And we're trying to look at genomic information and also looking at diseases looking at how drugs relate. And we're trying to in, in explore the white spaces to look at how some drugs may react differently to different diseases based on a patient's genome. Another thing that we're doing is looking also how we can support oncologists. If you think about the amount of data, physicians are completely overwhelmed. If you look at the amount of data, medical literature is being published. It would take an oncologist 160 hours per week to catch up with all the literature that's being published. So how can we help them, support them to be, prepare better for consultations, given the fact that an average before consultations, an oncologist may have five to 10 minutes time to prepare. So being able to actually harness and, and take the relevant information from the patient's medical records, but also looking at, at clinical trials, looking at all the work that, we've, uh, that, they've, that, that um, um, hospitals have done, we can then bring all that information together and start to build hypotheses on what treatment plans may be best for the patient. We also look at the future. And this is a project that is currently in research at IBM, and we're looking at giving Watson eyes, okay? Watson can read, natural, understand natural language. It can also hear. We want to be able to also give capabilities that we can also see. So here's an example of looking at, at a picture here and being able to quickly 
identify anomalies, we'll be able to detect a tumor. And using this capability, like this, like you see here, we're able to see the characterizations of that tumor. Given the fact that in several medical journals it was written that 44% of misdiagnostics occur. So how, if we can reduce that and help pathologists actually find the relevant information, as you see here. Another thing that we're also look exploring, and if we think about looking into the future of what we can do with cognitive systems, we're working on a technology which is called the debater. So giving Watson debating capabilities. And I'd like to show you a very quick example of how this may look like. So we're going to choose a topic, and the topic that I'm going to choose is the sale of violent video games to minors should be banned. I think we all have an opinion about the effect that video games may have. But what if we would ask Watson? We ingested information to Watson, Wikipedia information as well. And we want Watson to give us the pros and cons to this question. So let me show you what this looks like. Scanned approximately 4 million Wikipedia articles. Returning 10 most relevant articles. Scanned all 3,000 sentences in top 10 articles. Detected sentences which contain candidate claims. Identified borders of candidate claims. Assessed pro and con polarity of candidate claims. Constructed demo speech with top claim predictions. Ready to deliver. You have selected the topic. The sale of violent video games to minors should be banned. I would like to raise the following points in support of the topic. Exposure to violent video games results in increased physiological arousal, aggression-related thoughts and feelings as well as decreased prosocial behavior. In addition, these violent games or lyrics actually cause adolescents to commit acts of real-life aggression. Finally, violent video games can increase children's aggression. On the other hand, I would like to note the following claims that oppose the topic. Violence in video games is not causally linked with aggressive tendencies. In addition, most children who play violent games do not have problems. Finally, video game play is part of an adolescent boy's normal social setting. Would you like to discuss another topic? So having a system that can have a point of view of, of, of the pro and the con of a topic, you can foresee this also being addressed in healthcare, we have today, it exists tumor boards where we discuss a tumor between different hospitals and professionals. This could be somehow also applied. It could be also applied in the corporate world where you may have a system like, like, like this one like you've just seen that knows everything about your company, knows everything about the history, knows everything about your peers, about the industry, and you can really start to have a discussion, as you do with your board members, but also have additional capabilities to help you make sense of this data. Now, of course, we've introduced IBM Watson Group this year, 2014, and we've built up also an ecosystem. We've invested $1 billion in the group, and in the ecosystems, we're looking to work with partners. And I have some examples. Here's one example of, of a company in Canada, uh, which is called Sophie. And what they're doing is basically using Watson to be able to get information or do diagnostics for your pets, as an example, for your cat or dog. But there are other projects as well that we're doing with North Face, where they're actually you're able to ask Watson you know, you're planning a trip, you're going to Patagonia, and you'd like to know what type of equipment you should bring with you. And it starts to become an interaction. And this interaction is really, okay, is it, is it more of an adventurous holiday? Is it in winter? Is it in summer? And based on those questions and answers, it will start to make some propositions about what type of gear you should actually consider to buy. Not only does it give you recommendations, but you can also tap in into social media and looking also at what other people have said about the, about the product. We are really at the very early stages of cognitive computing. 
you saw me talk about the tabulating systems era and the programmable systems era. If I look at cognitive systems era, we are somewhere in 1961, to be honest. And there's a lot ahead of us. Very exciting time, a lot of capabilities, and I encourage you to also look at Bluemix, where we've opened up eight um, uh, APIs that you can actually use and, and explore and actually do some experiments with it. You can sign up for free, and I encourage you to do that very likely. So thank you very much for your attention. It was really it was a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much.